Okay, review time. This is a power supply, the BNK Precision 9110. Uh, one of the viewers of my channel noticed it in my bench and he asked me if it was a good power supply. Uh, and I told him I like it a lot. In fact, of uh, the dozen or so supplies I have, uh, it has, along with these venerable uh, Hewlett Packard power supplies, uh, made it to the prize position of uh, top shelf in my bench. So, uh, we will take a look at it. Uh, so some good things about the supply, it's a 100 watt supply, so that's plenty of power for bench work. Goes up to 60 volts or goes up to 5 amps, of course you can't have both, because um, that would be 300 watts, but the 60 volts does definitely find some uh, use occasionally, and I, I must say I appreciate it, uh, and the 5 amps as well. Uh, it is a digital supply, and you can um, adjust each digit individually, which is another thing that I very much like about the supply. Uh, you can dial in exactly the voltage you want, adjust all the digits downwards. Um, it is, of course, a loud power supply, so you can adjust the current as well. Uh, same thing, all the way down into uh, 1 milliamp uh, accuracy. Uh, and I find this very useful. The other very nice feature in this one is there is a adjustable on-off button. You can turn the supply on um, and off without having to turn the power off. And uh, I do find that very, very handy. So I personally find the user interface of this supply uh, really quite excellent. You don't have to sit there trying to nudge a potentiometer around for the exact voltage. Uh, if you don't want to, you can actually just go with the digit that you desire and change it. And, and actually, if you do want that mode where you're sort of creeping along in the supply, uh, you can see that that also is still available. Okay, so the most basic thing is a, a voltage test. So you just turn the power supply on and see what the voltages look like. And uh, you can see the voltage start here from zero, of course, and it rose up to uh, 10 volts. The scope says 10 volts. That's fine. Uh, more importantly, there's no overshoot. Uh, some of the really inexpensive Chinese power supplies you get off eBay actually overshoot, and that's a bit of a disaster for a loud power supply because you're often powering up unprotected electronics. So, uh, not too much of a surprise in a sort of mid-range supply here. We see a nice uh, periodic rise. Uh, the same thing has to be done at uh, the falling edge as well. Is turn the power supply off and make sure it doesn't undershoot, uh, which also would be uh, equally uh, disastrous. And you can see a nice uh, curve. So the next test is to see how the uh, power supply operates when it's uh, presented with an overload condition. I set the current limit relatively low and you turn it on and you can see an interesting behavior. The voltage actually jumps up. Now uh, it's it's fine in the sense that it's sent for 10 volts but the current limit is down to about 300 milliamps so the voltage doesn't rise above 10 volts so it's still um, within spec. The interesting question of course is is this little pulse also replicated in the current and for that I'm going to need to uh, use a voltage uh, current to voltage converter uh, this is uh, probably one of the most uh, accessible and uh, fairly accurate ones that you can get. So uh, let's see if the uh, current limit is uh, respected by the power supply. Okay, so a slightly more complicated setup. The top uh, trace is the voltage, the bottom trace is the current. And I uh, turn the supply on, and uh, what we'll see here is a, uh, of course, here's the voltage glitch going up, and then it drops down. That's fine. Uh, but one uh, problem with this power supply, it's set for about a 300 milliamp uh, limit. Uh, it starts at zero, goes through around 300 eventually, but you can see actually it violates the uh, the top limit here. It goes almost about 410 milliamps as a spike. So the voltage spike and the current spike follows each other. Um, now this is this is not a terribly desirable uh, attribute of power supply. Um, the HP supplies I have on my bench don't do this. Um, it's something you have to be uh, aware of with the BNK. So the construction is nice and straightforward. Main board here, uh, front panel board here, um, and nicely assembled. Uh, the soldering quality and the assembly uh, looks like it's done to a fairly decent standard. It's got some nice touches. They've uh, uh, put glue on all the connectors so they don't fall apart in shipping. Uh, the solder quality is good. Uh, you can see, of course, with the light shining through it, it's a two-sided circuit board, uh, which is fine, not, uh, not unexpected, not uh, inappropriate for power supply. All the looms, of course, are nicely uh, tied together with some uh, wire straps, and um, there really isn't much to comment in terms of build quality. It looks like a nice uh, nice assembly. Uh, other good things to note, sounds kind of trivial, but you know, there's stickers like uh, it had a burn-in cycle, and it did a pass over its test cycle, and it had a Kel cycle, so uh, again, it sort of tells me that uh, this is definitely a supply where someone is given it a little bit of love before they pushed it out into the customer's hand. Uh, same cannot be said uh, for some of those Chinese power supplies. Uh, the components, uh, some people comment on the fact that it uses TEPCOs for uh, electrolytic capacitors, some concerns there about uh, their overall reliability. 
Uh, you can see, of course, here's a microprocessor, and they've gone through the, uh, the little effort of scraping off the top of it, so you can't quickly reverse engineer how it works, although not really much of a barrier for most people. Um, some lovely uh, hand-wound resistors, almost looks like, uh, for some of the current uh, measurements, we should presume. The back supply, of course, here's the power input and the fuse rating, that's fine. Uh, a switch for 115 or 220 volt operation. Um, now, I know B&K doesn't actually make this supply because I've seen it rebadged by a number of vendors. Uh, this is a RS-232 control port in some models. Uh, with B&K, you can see they've liable for factory use only. I presume they've gone in and disabled the firmware. I believe this allows for uh, remote control. And, of course, the inlet fan. Uh, so a very short review, the, but uh, the viewers just asked me whether or not I like this power supply, and uh, the reality is I, I do like it very much. I like the digital control of setting voltages and currents. Uh, it does have one quirk. Uh, it, uh, of course, does glitch up there when you turn the power supply on. It goes into a current limit mode, but um, from what, of, uh, what I'm doing for the most part, that's uh, rarely a concern. Uh, the only real choice in that sort of $300 range, uh, if you uh, have that amount of money, is you have to go into sort of the the used market, and uh, you can grab some things like the, the HP or Agilent uh, supplies that uh, show up often on eBay, uh, and these can be good purchases as well. Uh, but uh, for my new power supply that I had on my bench about a couple years ago, I guess, um, I certainly have uh, had good use out of the supply, uh, and uh, it sort of has won a position on uh, the top shelf.